Okay, so welcome back, Zero if not a fans. We're gonna have another game, Pepe and Pet versus Draven. Go over the brackets right now. So Pepe and Pet and Draven. That's what we're watching now. Mick, Max we saw beat Takeshi Blocks. Yoshi beat Webis. Turn off the game right now. Yoshi beat Webis. Well, Webis I think wasn't able to come. DOS Box beat Moonman, but probably lose to God or Gode and we have Poyo, Ka Koyo and Pau, and loses bracket still kind of being settled around. Looks like the game here is just starting up, so get to that when it happens. Where's the player list? Great. Okay, apparently the deluxe player list does not work. Perfect. Okay, well, game is starting, and we have Southwest Corner. We have Pepe Ampere, and northeast corner, we have Draven. Oh, I should probably turn my music down. Yeah, apologies. Not it doesn't actually have music of its own, so I have to have background music, and that's something that's a little bit annoying to try to work out, but I think it works okay. Anyway, if you notice it doesn't actually match what's going on in the screen, that's why. Because normally this is actually combat music, not the starting up music for building up your economy. And we actually have core now. So Draven is going, oh, sorry, Pepe and Pedro is going for core, which is apparently generally seen as the stronger of the two factions, because there's actually a faction system in Nada. So it's generally seen as the stronger of the two factions, while Arm is generally seen as the weaker of the two, but also one of the more popular. On a map like this too, with a lot of C, there's apparently core ships are much more multi-purpose. Arm ships are much more single purpose, have less in the way of dedicated anti-gear on them just in general, but I'm pretty sure they're cheaper. It's kind of the thing, is I believe arm is cheaper and core is more powerful. I'm pretty sure that goes back to Total Annihilation, but I'm not 100% sure if Nada exactly pulls that through. Anyway, there is no factory... Okay, there's a factory going to be coming up, a hovercraft factory, f or I think it's hovercraft. Yes, hovercraft factory for Pepe Amper, while Draven went for a bot factory first off, getting a bunch of peewees to start off. It's apparently a normal thing going for... Re oh, Max actually pointing out core is cheaper, which is interesting. So I guess core is just generally more powerful then. I suppose that makes sense. I don't know. That's a little bit weird, but anyway. So Draven is... Sorry, Pepe Amper, he's got his... his Oh, that's a bot factory. Oops. Man, it looks like a hovercraft factory, because that's... That's the hovercraft platform, and that's... Oh. Yeah, the factories aren't that distinct, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. Anyway, getting AKs of his own, so both players going for early raiders, which apparently is a fairly popular thing to do. Well, not surprising there. Doesn't look like Draven is actually m looking to raid too quickly. He does have the raiders, but he's not looking to actually use them too urgently quickly. Well, Pepe Ampere, on the other hand, is... Also not being too aggressive, both players are sort of setting up to the center of the map. And a map like this, with an Isthmus like this, I'm... Well, not entirely surprised. Although, it's probably going to have a lot of... Like, trench warfare just along the center of the map, because there's really only this one path, unless you're playing as hovercrafts, or... They're playing with hovercrafts, or with ships. Because Nada, unlike Zero K, you actually do build multiple factories. Oh, sorry, I was wrong, I was exactly backwards. Arm, stuff, arm ships have apparently more stuff, and core ships have apparently more dedicated functions. Anyway, as I was saying, in unlike 0k in Nada, your factory isn't like a faction, it's just a factory. You can build more, you should build more than one because the assist build doesn't exist in Nada. Like it does in 0, oh it doesn't exist at all. So yeah, it's one thing to bear in mind is that 0k has a completely different way of setting that up. That being said, I'm a little surprised that a ship factory isn't being built in this little alcove right here. This little cove. It would make sense to do so, but... Apparently, Pepe and Pat are not going for that. He doesn't want to go for ships quite yet. And Draven also can go into this cove in order to build up a ship factory if he wants to. But neither player focused too much on that. On a map like this, I'm not surprised. I mean, ships can't easily get into land, obviously. You have to have something on the land to get through. And Battle Gang joined the center. It looks like Pepe Amper is being pushed back a bit. Draven is able to get a nice position on Pepe Amper's forces with his Peewees and push them pretty hard back. 
Not as many AKs are in the center of the map. Pepe Ampere is retreating pretty hard, and it looks like Draven... How far is he going to move in? That's what I want to know. Is he going to try to push in further? No, he is not. He is just keeping the center of the map to himself. And now, just setting up his forces. There's a lot of... In Nada, there's a lot of setting up lines of forces before you go in. Oh, that's not a bad idea. Okay, someone's suggesting using the Team Platter widget, which I've never really had to use for... Oh yeah, that does work better in Nada. In 0k, that tends to get in the way, but in Nada, I can see that being useful. And bloody expensive on the... Okay, one sec, I need to configure this. Ah, you know, where is it? Okay, I'm assuming that there's actually something on here for configuring Team Platter, but I might be wrong. Targ. Sorry, I apologize that I'm being so clumsy with this because I just haven't really played Nana much or tweaked with his widgets at all, and it's just... Yeah, that's... I don't know where this is going, so I... Apparently Team Platter is not in the most GPU cheap fashion. It really shouldn't need that that outline there. That's the thing that's costing a lot of GPU cycles. I don't anyway. Draven once again pushing in and dealing a lot of damage to the Peewees here. Or sorry, the AKs here. Nice use of local advantage. I gotta say, he does he is getting his units in the way of each other, though. That's the one thing. His units aren't in a nice line. They are walking in each other's path. But it looks like that's not mattering too much. And we do have Storms coming in here, so kind of like the Rocco is the core equivalent of the Rocco coming in here, and I'm just... Okay, where's... Mm, no, whatever. Anyway, I'm sorry, Team Platter is supposed to have a setting on it, a menu for what, for the opacity and for the outline. I guess it's 0k has settings menus for absolutely every widget. I'm kind of used to that. I mean, it's not too terribly expensive, it's just that it's... The frame rate's fluctuating a lot. You probably don't notice it on the stream, because the stream is only at 30 frames a second, but... The... For me, it's fluctuating between 40 and 120. Anyway, performance issues aside, we do have a nice battle coming in here with... Let's see, are the rock... No, no, infiltrators? Whoa, okay, that's an interesting choice. Not actually doing much, unfortunately. Draven losing both of those without... Well, sorry, losing one of them. The other one looks, appears to be cloaked. But decloaks on move, so I guess it's going to be hit pretty hard. And a couple builders coming in here. Not the best time, I would think. But radar does exist for Draven. So Draven going for mobile radar bots. Nice use of that, I guess. Let's see, what, what does Draven see? Draven, not looking at Draven's point of view. Can't tell who's player one, who's player two offhand. Anyway, Draven is able to see most of the sea, if, he, if there's anything on there, and able to see exactly what is coming in from Pepe Ampere. Pepe Ampere, on the other hand, he does... He also sees the same thing, roughly. So he sees what Draven is up to. It looks like he's going from static radar, though. This static radar up here appears to be what's causing him to have a nice little view of what's going on in the battlefield. And... Oh, nice use of a... Not a tick, but whatever the equivalent is. Not the best use. That, okay, that was actually a very nice use. That needs to have happened a bit further in. That's a thing. And Oh, okay. Pointing out energy. Yeah, see, I can't actually see both players' resources at once. So I don't know. Okay, both players are out of energy. That is the one thing. Oh, and apparently they can, in fact, move cloak. I apologize. That was a mistake on my part. Like I said, I don't play this game very much, so I, I'm not the most familiar. Anyway, we do have some stack defense coming up from... Draven, and I have been pointing out that a vehicle factory has been built up for Pepe Ampere. He does have vehicle factory coming in. He does have levelers coming in. That's what he's looking for. That will tear apart these bots, no problem. Levelers are, well, an excellent riot unit, as you'd expect if you, any 0k players are watching. Levelers work the same way. They are anti, they are riot units. They are anti-raider, anti-large group. They're crowd control units. It's what they do. But it's also something that can't even be careful about because vehicles are very expensive compared to bots. And Pepe Ampere going for Air Factory on top of his bot factory, but still... Oh, sorry, Draven going for Air Factory. Pepe Ampere is going for vehicles. But both players are pretty low in energy. No, Pepe Ampere is good for energy. He's built up... Has he built up a fusion plant or something? Built up something. He's built a lot of solar plants, that's for sure. 
But at any rate, he... Oh, Geothermal. That's why. Geothermal Power Pants giving him a lot of power, whereas Draven is not gone for his Geothermal Vent. Right here, or here. I think that's in range. Yes, both of them are in range. A bit surprising he has not gone for that. But he hasn't, so... That's just how it's going to be, I guess. He's going to need that eventually, though. He does have to have energy. He is struggling at this point. He is starting to get energy back. His Solar Collectors are coming in. They are giving him some energy, but it's not quite enough just yet. Units don't need energy to fire, though, or move. Unlike in TA, they don't need that. Zero K obviously doesn't have the mechanic, but TA can. Anyway, well, TA, total the original Total Annihilation does. This, of course, is not original Total Annihilation. It says so right in the title. It's not original Total Annihilation. It's exactly what it is. Or at least what it isn't. What it is isn't exactly clear, but what it isn't is Total Annihilation. They say so themselves. Just ignore the remarkable similarities. But, Leveler is in. There we go. This is what I was waiting for. The Leveler to finally get in here and start tearing apart these bots. Artillery Wars along the center are looking like they're actually going... Well, the Artillery War part is going in Draven's favor, but Pepe on Pad does have the Levelers. He can just push in and also set up with the Mobile K mobile Raider K-Bots. And Air of his own. So both players have now gone for Air. Looks like there's no other factories for Draven, though. He does have a couple Hellfish. Those not actually able to do too much. Didn't quite hit their targets, and Hellfish are... They are low range. Actually, there we go. Second pass, Hellfish is able to get some damage in. They are low flying bombers. Can be hit by most anti air on the ground. There are high flying bombers as well, but neither player has built them quite yet. Or at least Draven has. And Pepe Ampere is. What is he going for? He's going for fighters. He just wants to take the air control. He doesn't want to actually go for bombers of his own right now. He just wants to get rid of all the Hellfish that have been built up for Draven. And almost getting rid of one of the pillagers. Not able to get rid of a leveler, though. And certainly not able to get rid of the Mortys here, which are actually now making their each other work go into Pepe on Pedro's favor. His Mortys have an absolutely insane range, as you can see. Compared to Hammers, which are basically half that. I mean, Hammers have a range of 590. Mortys have a range of 1,000, or 800. So they win the range wars. However, the Hellfish are still getting through here. Are there any anti-air? This is the thing. He needs to have... He does not have any anti-air whatsoever. Whatever anti-air is hitting him is just because bots are trying to hit air. They, they can shoot at it. There we go. Avengers are in play, and that's going to work. Let's see. In the back, no. Nothing really has changed too much for Pepe Ampere. And Draven going for a... He's teching up his air. He's going for level 2 construction on his air factory. That's Yeah, it's the way that not as tech works is that you have tech choices that you can build basically a tier 2 constructor tower, and that builds tier 2 stuff, like tier 2 factory, like advanced aircraft plant, and can build advanced economy stuff, can even build a moho engineer, which we're probably going to see some of as soon as that's done, since they are pretty powerful units for construction. Interestingly, neither player has gone for sequa yet. Both players are still going pretty strongly for air and land. Neither player, I mean, hovercraft's not a big surprise, no one's going for that, but neither player going for ships, and ships would be able to bombard this very nicely. I guess it's just not a popular thing to do at high level. And... Oh, okay. Also, the outline is the only thing that's making this look good. Or at least it makes it look like you don't... It doesn't have to look that good, because it looks more cartoony as a result. That's the way I use it. And it looks like... Oh! Okay, Hellfish do have a tail gun. They can get rid of Avengers, at least a single Avenger at a time, but doesn't matter. Right now, Draven is moving in. He is trying to get rid of all these vehicles, trying to get rid of everything here. It looks like Slash has to move back, too, and that presumably has to stop to fire, like in 0K. But these Peewees not able to quite get in. Hellfish coming in for another pass, and not a bad shot there, although it looks like all the levelers have been destroyed. Bit hard to set, tell. It looks like they probably have been. But, doesn't matter. Pepe Ampere going for a counterattack. This, like I said, this is going to be a no man's land area for a while. Not paying too much attention to that, because that is just pushing back and forth. Nothing too much is going to change there. 
And a Vash is up. Interesting. It's the... What is that? Oh, that's just a anti-ground. I guess it's the equivalent of the Hellfish for core. An advanced aircraft plant is being built. Level 2 Constructor has finally been done, and Draven can finally start getting some powerful air units. Or more powerful air units. But yeah, neither player is going for anything other than land, and in this case, air. But nothing on the water. So this whole section of water is basically just open space. Oh, never mind. No, actually, there is a hovercraft. I totally missed this. There is a hovercraft plant built over here for Pepe Ampere. He is getting a couple... Well, he's getting a builder here. Has already gotten one. Oh, this isn't a builder. He does have one builder getting some metal extractors in the water. Nicely done there. And these Nixers off to the side are going to be able to... Looks like able to do some shore bombardment. That's kind of what he needs to break this. He needs something to flank. Possibly get around the back here as well and start dealing with Draven's base directly rather than having to worry about this getting through the center here. The Ismith in the center. Because that Ismith in the center is not going down. There's no easy way that's going to happen. So he needs to go around the side and then attack in the back and do some raiding. It's a little bit tough because the fact that the tower is very good for defense, but still needs to do that. This advanced aircraft plant is about a minute away from being done. It's halfway done. Once that is done, then it will be probably pretty big. But it's not done yet. However, we do have... Well, not quite flanking yet. They are going for the bombardment. They aren't going for a flank. Well, they're going for a bit of a flank. Okay, now they're going for a flank. They're definitely moving up to flank these units. And now Pepe Ampere is actually able to get a bit of... He's getting a bit of leeway in the center. He's not quite pushing yet, but he does have a lot of the wreckage. I should point this out. Most of the wreckage is on his sides with his units. I don't think he has any builders with him to actually take the wreckage. The one thing. He kind of needs that, but he doesn't have that nearby. Where are his builders? Nope, he has... Where are these builders? Okay, builders are coming in. There we go. There is a builder coming up here that is going to be reclaiming. Because that is all Pepe Ampere is reclaiming. I think Pepe Ampere is, has the advantage by far in this game. Advanced aircraft plant is finally done. And mostly it looks like air control is just trying to be reclaimed. Draven just wants to get air control back. That's what he wants. But he hasn't quite done that yet. He's probably going to do it pretty soon. But really it comes down to whether or not he's going to be attacked from the from the back. I mean, Pepe Ampere has, as you can see, almost double the economy of Draven at the moment. His metal is also being spent more efficient, or, well, more. Just being spent more. That's the thing. And a sea factory being built up. There we go. In that cove. A shipyard is being built. Draven not going for a shipyard of his own. I mean, Pepe Ampere has money to spare at this point. And Draven, not so much. And more Hellfish coming to the center to try to deal with this. But there are enough anti-air forces in here to stop it for the most part. And what can't stop it will be... Well, the ground can't stop it. The air certainly will. Draven really is having a hard time getting breaking the center right now. He does almost have this hawk set up. Actually, he does have one set up already. He's going to try to use that to get rid of this Avenger, but we'll see if that works out. Well, it looks like it's not going to matter right now, because Draven is just pushing it with... Sorry, Pepe Ampere is pushing it with way too many forces. His shipyard's done. He's getting a... Van wow. Getting a Vanquisher. That's actually fairly expensive. But that should be fine. That'll be great for finishing this up for the orbital... For the... Not orbital. The sea bombardment. No orbital, orbital bombardment in this game. What am I thinking? Not sure what game I am thinking of, but... What I am sure about is Pepe Ampere is going to win this. He's got this. Like, I'm a bit surprised he hasn't moved these Nixers in further or around the back, but Pepe Ampere has enough firepower in the center of the map. It's not going to matter. Does he have... I don't see him getting any Tier 2 vehicles. Looks like he's just going pure with Tier 1. And now ships, of course. He does have the ship factory being built up. But yeah, Pepe Ampere is completely stopping this. He could push in right now. He should push in right now, actually. Just push in and finish this off. He hasn't yet, but that would probably do... Well, do the thing he needs to do. Win the game. Why he hasn't pushed in yet? He's still just holding this center point. Maybe he's not sure... He's probably just not sure he can push in. I'm just supposed he's not sending... He's not sending any air units in here. Not sending any... Like, even a Nixer just sending this in just to see what's going on. See what's what he can hit, what's being built, because he is starting to lose air control. I mean, he hasn't actually sent out any of these VASPs too far forward yet, but 
Where's that hawk? That hawk is there, and there should be probably some bombers coming in fairly soon, I'd imagine. And there's the Moho Engineer. That's going to be built up. Building some Moho Metal Extractors, and then from there... That will probably even up the economy a bit. I mean, if Draven can get the Moho Metal Extractors, he should be able... To, I think they will extract quickly enough. Not sure the exact scaling factor. But... It... It is better than a regular Metal Extractor, that's for sure. And it looks like, there we go, Flank is coming in from the... From these hovercrafts here, if someone can mention the actual scaling factor on the Moho Mines, that would be great. But yeah, the Moho Mines, that would give him a bit of a compensation for the fact that he has no territory control. I mean, all the territory is controlled by... Oh, factory. Hang on a sec. No, never mind. The metal extractors, for some reason, being listed as a factory. Rather than economy, for some reason. And there we go, there's that hover flank I was talking about. Not quite moving on the land, but at the same time, we do have all these forces to the south... Well, the center in the Izmith, south of this battle, who are starting to move into position, but not quite enough. However, the Nick, the Nixers can just stay away. They can just be right next to shore and too far away to be countered. So it's going to be really hard for, well, it's going to be damn near impossible for Draven to deal with this right now. His Moho Engineer is still a few minutes out from being done. He doesn't have, the thing is, because he doesn't have a whole lot of metal, he can't build it super quickly. While Draven, or sorry, while Pepe on Powder, if he wanted to, could build any of that stuff really quickly. And is that, that can't be the only Vanquisher. No, it's still the only Vanquisher. It's still going to be another few minutes. I guess the lack of metal is starting to be a problem. Another K-Bot lab being built up instead using that. And I think it's going to end up being another 10 minutes or so, honestly. It does seem like it's taking a little while. I mean, Pepe on Powder being very conservative, he thinks that Draven has more than he does. But he's about to get Raider in there, and at this point, Pepe and Pedro should know exactly what Draven's up to. He should be seeing pretty much everything Draven has. Not anything behind here. There's a Radar Shadow here, but most everything else should be well aware that he can just move in right now. And he is! He is now moving in with most things. His Mortys are staying back just to deal with anything that tries to counterattack, but at this point, he is... He is going in. And that Moho Engineer, not quite done yet. Nowhere near done. It's probably not going to be done before the game is over. In fact, I think my 10-minute call was actually off. Because now Pepe Ampere is... He's moving for the kill. These Nixers need to move in, though. But other than that, he is moving in for the kill. And that will be game once it comes up. This K-Bot Lab not yet being built up. Pepe Ampere not paying attention to his home. He is paying more attention to what's going on as attack on Draven's base. And an attempt to EMP there, but not quite enough. Didn't quite work out. So it looks like this is it. Draven, there we go. Now Pepe Ampere is moving these hovercrafts in. Starting to take out the solar plants, or at least close them up, but he will take them up pretty soon. By the way, for those not familiar with Nada, killing the tower is the one thing you need to do to win. Kill your opponent's tower or command center, and you win. Doesn't matter though, Draven's throwing in the towel, and that will be called. The game just needs to resign, and that's game. Not a bad game. Though admittedly, I would prefer to map that had a bit more fluidity in the ground game, because this one Ismus was kind of a stale, it was a trench for most of the game. We were in World War One mode for most of that game, which was a little bit annoying. Anyway, players now just talking, so I think that just hit the resign button already. <laughs> well, anyway, there's talking as Pepe and Pera tears apart Draven's base. Not sure why Draven hasn't hit the resign button and or self destructed all of his forces yet, but yeah, he hasn't. Anyway, so I've enjoyed that, and I will be back with another game we should have next. I'm guessing, like I said, Goat versus Power Koyo. Whoever wins that game. Let's see who's going to win here. Okay, Goat, Goat obviously won. Koyo and Pow, I don't know who's playing between the two or who's winning between the two. So once that happens, then we'll see what goes on. So Draven's going to move on to the loser's bracket, and... Pepe Ampere is going to move on to fight the winner of Mac and Yoshi, which I don't know who that is yet. And once that's decided, then we will have a... Well, we'll have it, and it'll be the next game. Hmm. There we go! The game has been... The game has been called. It's been resigned. So we're going to move on to the next game. Oh, Koyo apparently is not here. He has gone missing. File a report on that one. We're missing a Koyo. 
If anyone has seen him, please return him to the Nada tournament. Because we kind of need him here. Anyway, I will be back shortly, so stay tuned.